Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing for you Star Wars Republic Commando on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the stupendous PJ O'Reilly and has been adapted for video by me. But before we get too far into it, we do have a disclaimer, and it's an important one, so please don't skip it. Since PJ wrote this review, I myself have also played the game, and we ran into a few uh, inconsistencies, shall we say, in regards to performance. PJ had no issues whatsoever beyond a little bit of stuttering at loading screens, um, but I had, well, you, you'll see it, pretty pretty noticeable ones. We have confirmed that what I've experienced is not what PJ experienced. There is clearly some sort of discrepancy going on and we are investigating it. If we manage to work out what is going on, we will let you know with an update in a pinned comment down below, but this is something that we are currently investigating because it's really weird. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. A long time ago, or at the very least in 2005, LucasArts took a bit of a risk and threw us all a curveball with a Star Wars offering that eschewed Jedis and lightsabers, the Force, epic dogfights, and much of the fantastical heroes that fans expect from the series in favor of a dark and gritty tactical take on everyone's favorite space opera. Star Wars Republic Commando was, quite rightly, very well received upon release, and still regularly finds itself ranked in the top 10 Star Wars games of all time to this day. But some 16 years down the line, does it still hold up? Is it worth jumping into all over again in this Switch port? Those are the questions we intend to answer. Well, the answer is a pretty resounding yes. We had our doubts as we booted this one up. Most first-person shooters from the 2000s don't tend to aid particularly well, unless they're Half-Life 2, and can often be a little bit of a pain to return to. But what's here is still a very good time indeed. Blasting your way across Geonosis in order to assassinate Separatist leader Sun Fak, investigate the darkened corridors of the derelict prosecutor assault ship and mounting a wookie rescue mission in the forests of Kashyyyk feel almost as good today as they did back when we first got to grips with this one. And this is mostly down to the game's wonderfully well-implemented squad system and a sleek HUD that really wouldn't seem out of place in a modern shooter. Directing your three AI teammates around in Star Wars Republic Commando is such a supremely simple and satisfying thing to do. Whether you're ordering them to take up a sniping position to get a tactical advantage over incoming enemies, rig up traps, or explosive barrels, breach doors, disarm mines, slice controls, revive downed comrades, including yourself, or get themselves healed up at a back to dispenser, Scorch, Fixer, and Sev are never anything less than a joy to work with. By simply aiming your reticule at an icon representing any one of these commands as they appear throughout the game's world, your team will hurriedly get to work, smartly and capably dealing with threats as they do. You can also hold down the A button for a further layer of tactical choice, enabling you to call up your team to form around you, search and destroy, secure areas, and focus fire on selected enemies. For a game that takes place, for the most part at least, in tightly confined corridors, this wealth of options in how you direct your small unit gives the whole endeavor a thrilling sense of actual teamwork. You really do get to feel as though you're in charge of a badass, genetically enhanced commando squad, infiltrating dangerous enemy territory, and laying the absolute laser smackdown. This sense of camaraderie, of working together and directing your men, is then further enhanced by constant radio chatter that manages to imbue this group of super soldiers with actual personalities. There's smart use of sound effects and music from the films as well, as well as some top-notch original compositions by the game's composer Jesse Harlin. This is atmospheric stuff that knows exactly when to deploy its signature Star Wars noises and makes good use of the best parts of the prequel trilogy. The wonderfully well-designed battle droids from those films make for entertaining cannon fodder, making the right death noises and falling apart in a satisfying manner as you drill them with your weapons. Your HUD designed to imitate the inside of a clone trooper's helmet, also adds much to the atmosphere here, keeping all your vital info front and center, but without it getting in the way. Nice. It also enables you to switch to a tactical mode that highlights individual teammates' locations and a low-light night vision mode which gives the action a weirdly realistic and gritty look as you mow down the enemies in the darkness. In terms of weapons, your default commando gun smartly morphs into several different weapons, with a handful of attachments that let you switch between assault rifles, sniper, and grenade launch mo 
roads. Dead Enemies also drops some sweet boomsticks that you can pick up and use at your leisure, with the shotgun here a particularly satisfying addition to your armory that's great for blasting great big green holes in slavers and is nicely complemented by a concussion rifle that makes short work of mechanical menaces. Besides guns, you'll also have a bunch of different grenade types to cycle through, each of which is best used to control and corral certain types of enemies. You'll need pulse grenades to take out the larger types of battle droids, for example, sending them into electro convulsions and lowering their shields in order to allow you to get some serious shots in, whereas thermal detonators are best chucked into a busy corridor full of fleshy foes. Of course, this is still a 16-year-old game, and there's no doubt that what's on offer here, even with the benefits of that smart squad system, does feel rather long in the tooth in some regards. There's no getting away from the rather dated visuals, which definitely look cleaner here, but can still be a little bit hard on the eyes in places, and the layout of the short levels is resolutely linear, corridor upon samey corridor of rather repetitive enemies to relentlessly pound your way through, uh, it's not exactly diverse. The story is serviceable enough whilst it lasts, although it ends abruptly and without any fanfare whatsoever, after just seven hours or so. This is a pretty basic port as well, I mean there's no gyro support and although it's not massively necessary in this game, uh, it still would have been nice. And beyond a bit of a resolution boost, a barely perceivable lick of paint, modernized controls and HD rumble, what you've got here is basically the same game that you played in 2005, sans that version's excellent multiplayer mode. However, these nickels aside, Star Wars Republic Commando is still one of our absolute favorite Star Wars games and something of a must-play for fans of the franchise who missed out on this the first time around. This is a surprisingly dark and gritty take on everyone's favorite space saga that's aged far better than realistically it has any right to. It serves up a good few hours of top-notch pew-pew action and is a massively welcome addition to the Switch's currently rather paltry selection of Star Wars offerings. Star Wars Republic Commando has aged surprisingly well and proves to be a ton of fun to revisit in this admittedly rather basic Switch port. The squad system here is still supremely satisfying to get to grips with, the HUD elements are slick, and there's plenty of atmospheric fun to be had as you blast your way through the three campaign stories on offer. Yes, there's no doubt the level design is archaic, there's no great variety in enemies, and the visuals have had only the most basic of touch-ups, and it is a real shame that the multiplayer has been completely excised. Overall though, this is still a very welcome return for one of the very best Star Wars video game offerings. You've reached the end of the review, and that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts, and yes, as I alluded to at the beginning, I didn't even allude to it, as I mentioned at the beginning of the review, PJ and I, we had very different experiences. PJ suffered no major performance issues whatsoever, whilst, as you might have been able to tell from the footage, uh, which is all mine, I had some pretty significant ones from time to time, and it did actually affect my enjoyment of the game, which is a massive shame, because when it was running properly, I was really enjoying it, and I want to go back and play this properly, but the performance, it's genuinely affecting how I play the game, and it's a massive shame. We even compared footage, and we found that we were just getting very different experiences. We've, we've got the same model of Switch and everything, there's no clear reason why this is happening. It's a really bizarre thing. Nothing to do with performance, but one thing that I did really appreciate was the diversity in voice acting. It wasn't just all American voices. That was- that's genuinely refreshing. I really want to play this game properly and play it all the way through, so if a patch comes through that fixes these performance issues, then that'd be great. Um, we're just gonna continue investigating to see why it's so different. But yeah, as I said, updates in a pinned comment down below. But if they can get it performing nice and smoothly, then yeah, I like this game a lot. Also, the option to play the game in the original 4-3 aspect ratio, I'd like that a lot, please. I don't like stretchy stuff. <laughs>